Hi everyone, this is Marianne from uh, Revealing Light Tarot, Astrology and Spirituality. How are you all today, wherever you are in the world when you're watching? Huge shout out to you. Today um, I'm going to address some a question or questions that I often get and that is when will the war in Ukraine uh, finish? Um, we felt that there would have been a major uh, turning point around June, May, June. And of course, Ukraine appeared to uh, appeared to look like it was, I wouldn't say winning the war, but have an upper hand. We then had uh, Russia then concentrate its um, invasion on eastern Ukraine uh, and really uh, blockading the Black Sea, um, reducing cities in, in the eastern Ukraine to rubble and then moving in and saying, well, they're ours now, issuing uh, Russian uh, passports to anyone that was left there uh, taking I think there's about 300,000 children in in uh, Ukrainian children who have been set, taken to Russia uh, and assimilated into the Russian culture I mean these are crimes that you would have seen and I'm going to say crimes because they're unfolding in front of us you would have seen in World War Two. you would have seen under Hitler uh, and there's always those comparisons, isn't it, uh, aren't there? And I, I, in some ways, I think uh, what Putin has done in the fullness of time will emerge uh, to be as bad, at least, as what Hitler, uh, Hitler did during his um, Holocaust, during his invasions of, of, of different countries. We've also seen the West... When I say the West, the EU and uh, the US give this massive support. And as the war drew on, uh, there was a need for further support. There was some lags there around equipment uh, going to Ukraine, material, defence materials. And that's ramping up now as Russia gets a foothold in the East. Now, I guess the question is, how, how is this going to play out over the next six months? Experts, pundits are saying that this looks like a protracted, a protracted, uh, I guess, fight back after invasion. Because, I mean, I guess, you know, you can say it's a war, but of course we had another country invade the sovereignty of, of, uh, of Ukraine. I was, in, I was heartened uh, by... Italy, Germany and France's visit to Kyiv. I was also heartened by their support for Ukraine's bid to join the EU, uh, recommending, it hasn't been voted on on all 20, I think it's 27 countries yet, they all have to unanimously agree to bring Ukraine in, but the major movers and shakers in the EU, including the EU Commission, has recommended that Ukraine be given candidate status. Now, I'm not going to count my chickens yet before they're hatched. However, I felt that they would, after some uh, argy-bargy, I'll just call it that, um, would be given what I termed to be provisional status. I didn't know much about the process. I went back and had a look, and it, this is basically candidate status. But there was a seven of swords there, so I'll just wait till that full vote has been taken. In any case, I want to do a six-month spread. In terms of timing, tarot's not, it's not precise around timing. As you know, some of my predictions come true two years later. <sighs> not for the faint-hearted, is it, really? <laughs> Either my predictions or, or those that are listening to my predictions, <laughs> because they do entail having uh, a measure of faith and that's what I look for faith and commitment if I'm doing the the hard work and uh, moving through spirit to bring this information forward I want you to step up as well and have some faith um, and thankfully those that are still here they do you do have some faith and it's that intention it's that commitment which takes us through all right Six month spreads are quite revealing, I find. So let's have a look. I'm using the uh, Tarot Grand Looks, Lux, Looks, <laughs> Lux, <laughs> by Cairo McKetty uh, as the base cards and the Prisma Tarot 
as the um, as the clarifying card. So let's get started here. What Ukraine, the Russia's invasion of Ukraine. What is likely to occur? There's now been another injection of funding and materials, defence materials. Australia's just sent over a shipment. Uh, in fact, our new Prime Minister has been asked to visit Kiev. Uh, let's have a look. I mean, just everywhere. Baltic countries, EU countries, US, you name it, have sent massive, massive lot of money and arms. Uh, so much volunteering there. But this war needs, it needs more and it needs it quick, it needs those quick responses. What's likely to happen, please? Uh, will Ukraine get the upper hand over the next six months? I'd like to pull six cards. Let's look at the rest of June, card one, July 2, August 3, September 4, October 5. November 6. Six cards, please. Ukraine Is Ukraine likely to get the upper hand over the next six months in eastern Ukraine? Okay. Okay, so there, there's... <laughs> looking good so far. Mmm. Good stuff. Okay, let's do three. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. By, I'll bring the laptop down. By the time we reach November, Ukraine is actually looking, it's looking really good for Ukraine. And we'll go month by month and I'll show you what's going on there. We have the Page of Swords. Um, I do get the feeling intuitively that there will be some in those occupied territories uh, that will move toward aligning themselves with Russia. And I think that's probably the biggest threat that Ukraine faces is that these uh, Ukrainian residents in the east, that the separatists, I guess, are adding to Russia's firepower. We also have the Five of Swords which is this terrible abuse of power. This is, this is also young people. Uh, I, you know, I'm very conscious that Ukraine's young people are dying in trying to hold on to their country. And this is Putin, uh, as always, and his, and his infrastructure, uh, the king of pentacles, and of course, Russia. So we see here Russia's bid at the base of all of this to take territory seven of swords uh which always worries me when i see the seven of swords it's, its meaning is around deception and lying and these kind of uh, uh machiavellian uh, so evil strategies that uh take from others uh and this also came up as a clarifying card around uh ukraine's candidate candidature which is why i'm reserving here i'm not saying they won't be given candidate eu candidate status what i'm saying is one of those 27 or more of those countries are probably going to try it on and any one of those objectors may well be either being blackmailed by uh, russia or um acting in their own kind of interests aligning uh, in some way. So that Seven of Swords is interesting there. Uh, and we've got the Nine of uh, Swords here, these high levels of anxiety. All of us, all of us, um, whether we're uh, in located in Europe or whether we're sending arms and money to Ukraine or whether we just, you know, want peace in our vicinity, uh, which would be Ukraine rolling over to Russia and saying, here, take the eastern part of our country. <laughs> the thing with Putin is he will never stop. He can never be trusted. And we all know that. And I think the EU has, uh, has finally realised that all right, let's bring the laptop down and look at this six monthly spread. It's quite interesting. These are brilliant cards for 
Ukraine's efforts and the world that is supporting them. So uh, in June, we have the King of Wands. Uh, that is the bravery. That's the motivation and passion um, that makes them step into the face of danger. Show, this is June. This is the current month. They're being given more weapons. Show me this King of Wands. King of Wands. It's He's got the upper hand. If you want, he's got the high ground here. We have the Hierophant card. He all, The King of Wands also has the universe, the right, the high ground at their back. The Hierophant card. Governments of the world are supporting the bravery of Ukraine. And let's not get too cynical. They're supporting them... For a lot of reasons, but also because of their fight. They're fighting the fight to stop oppression and invasion. Queen of Pentacles. So this is the help that's being given to them to stabilise their, I think, their economy domestically. They need to get their grain out. They need to keep their economy um, moving along. And I think that is a focus of the West to so that their government, their economy doesn't buckle under this really blitzkrieg of destruction. So, so much support is being given to them and rightly so. Now we have Six of Wands uh, moving out of troubled waters. One more clarification and endings and beginnings of the world. So what I'm saying is that in June, the help from the West, EU, US, Commonwealth countries, UK, is actually going to turn the tide or in Ukraine's favour in June in some way. Three of Pentacles, base of the deck, underlying energy, uh, talks about uh, p coming together, working in harmon har harmoniously in support to build something, to rebuild something. So you could see some help to rebuild um, as well. But we also have the Three of Swords, which is... Just that absolute, every time I see a funeral, I see the heartbreak and the, and the cost. So June, June, the help from the, from the allies is really going to make a difference. Now we have July, the magician card. That's like a manifestation. That's like, you could see a breakthrough in July for Ukraine. Let's see, I think that's like a... What I'm feeling is in July could be um, it's a decider month uh, because the temperance card comes after in August, which is moderation. Um, I think they could, July is a critical month and with the magician there, I'm, it's a manifestation card. Whatever Ukraine does in July, I think really does tilt this in their favour. So let's have a look at the magician card here. That would be July. Let's have a look at the Magician card. Of course, this is all important because Ukraine, the invasion of Ukraine has really set off post-COVID. As if COVID didn't damage economies enough, uh, we've got the Magician card. Uh, we've got this uh, invasion of Ukraine setting off almost like worldwide recession, inflation and recession. So everyone has an interest in bringing this to a close. But I do feel that the map of Europe is changing. I do feel that energy reliance uh, on things like oil and gas is changing. You might see moves toward nuclear um, power in the EU. Um, of course, that with all the inherent risks that brings. The Magician card. Show me this Magician card, please. July. So we have here the Eight of Swords. They're going to take some kind of victory in July. It's like they restrict restrict uh, Russia. Is this get you know defending and claiming uh, Kazan? I think that's uh, a critical territory there. Um, King of Swords. Yeah, planning and strategy. I like this. This is uh, Zelensky's card too. I think he's an Aquarius. So we've got some really good cards here. Ace of Pentacles. This is July is a good month for Ukraine. They will, uh, according to these cards, take sufficient victories, which leads them to the Temperance card, Moderation Healing in August. So you could even see a, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say like, um, 
what could I say here? It could be a regrouping in August. Because um, meanwhile, we have the sanctions continuing to bite. I mean, Russia is very isolated, very isolated. The temperance card, moderation, moderation, healing. This is one foot on the land, one foot on the sea. You could see Odessa strengthen, the area around Odessa strengthen. There's a balancing out here. So what they do in July brings forward uh, an equal, equal kind of status here in August. Show me this temperance card. These are really, I shouldn't say go to quickly but these are good cards for ukraine we've got the wheel of fortune something uh changes luck is on ukraine's side uh and we have an inevitability a judgment occurring here this is like an ending of something well we see the end of the war six of cups giving and receiving help um it's like we see a let up i think by august um Mm, the nine of swords but there's much anxiety here uh, because you can't really trust anything that uh, Putin does he got out of other parts of Ukraine and then concentrated his firepower on the west uh, on the eastern part of Ukraine seven of pentacles are regrouping um, this is financial issues here biting uh, yeah, it's a pausing here. So, uh, you know, really Putin could regroup, try and regroup in August uh, based on really running out of running out of resources. Um, I know that's a huge statement, but August is somehow, I'm not going to say Russian retreating, but there's a kind of a pausing or a lull. Let's see what happens in September because we've got the full card, which is basically new starts. And the judgment card came up in the last spread. So what is this new start here? So what I'm hearing is that key parts of the East return to Ukraine. And because of the temperance card, one land, one foot on land and one foot on sea, I think they're shoring up some of, it's either the Odessa area, Curzon area, I, I, it's around the sea. They take back territory. Okay, so what's happening in September that this beautiful new start occurs? I mean... These are good cards. Six of Cups here, giving and receiving help. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune comes up, comes up again. Yeah, I feel, and judgment. It's an inevitability that because of the help that Ukraine is currently being given by the Allies, that they take back key parts of eastern Ukraine. And I do feel it's around the sea. All right, it's a new start for them. And then we have movement here of troops. This is looking really good, really good. So now we have October, Knight of Wands. This is pushing forward again. So a key victory and then pushing forward again. So Knight of Wands, Knight of Wands. These, these are key months in this uh, battle here. Key months which seem to be moving in Ukraine's favour. So the Knight of Wands here, what's occurring in October? So we have here uh, the Four of Pentacles. So this is like walled up. So I'm not going to say that the war is over. I don't think so. But I think there will be key pockets that um, in the in other parts of eastern Ukraine that remain, um, you know, troops get surrounded, battles that may not, that they may not win, but they have already taken sufficient territory by October back in eastern Ukraine. Four of Pentacles also could be Russian soldiers being uh, surrounded as a result of Ukraine's push. 
Six of Swords. We have Moving Out of Troubled Waters. That's the next card. Movement, movement. They're pushing back. They're pushing Russia back. And we've got the Ten of Swords. Unfortunately, high casualties in October. Looks like Russia tries to regroup and have another go. Uh, but Ukraine's pushing forward yet again. And uh, we'll ask for more help come October from the their allies. We will give them that help. Again, pushing Russia out of Ukraine. We have the Two of Pentacles. It is a decision time for us again. Uh, and we have the Ten of Cups. So there's some overarching arching victory again, which has a high cost uh, by October. Now we get to November, which is a really good card. I probably should have drawn seven. We'll see what else is there. This is movement, mass movement here. It can also be refugees, but it, it literally is moving out of troubled waters. So by November, we are kind of allowing ourselves to understand the victories for Ukraine. The peril is somehow less by the end of this year for Ukraine as a result of big pushes of resourcing and materials. Okay, show me the Six of Swords. This will be November. Show me the Six of Swords. Oh, lovely. Ace of Cups. Yeah, this is definitely a new start here. The full card, the Knight of Wands, uh, November. The, there are significant victories. Queen of Wands bringing forward stability here. Uh, and we've got the queen, two Queens of Pentacles. Again, stability. It's uh, looking good. And four of Wands reunification. There is, by November, significant territory taken back by Ukraine. Now, uh, the Ace of Pentacles, wow, they take back, it's literally around this seaboard, um, really significant victories, their grain starts to move again, um, yeah, really, really significant, significant victories, it could be also that full card uh, is allowing Ukraine, I said economy, they don't want the economy to crumble they want, don't want this mass starvation so we've got movement all around including of the grain let's see uh, okay december there's de it's decision time it's decision time and here i feel that the west might in december start to put pressure given ukraine's taken back a lot not a lot obviously key eastern uh eastern ukraine victories it's it's decision time. Do we keep going or do we do the do the peace deal here, which may involve some giving up of uh, territory? Could be uh, key decisions for Russia. December that temperance card foreshadowed December, a key month for decision making on both sides. Now we have uh, January wish fulfillment. Um, this is like miracles. So I'm saying by January, this invasion looks very very different very very different and we've got february strength so without pulling clarifying cards it just gets better and better by february ukraine is in a very strong position okay so um it would be really valuable to do a, a six monthly um question on putin because i just Okay, let's just pull some overarching cards. Is Putin still leading Russia by March, March, May? Let's see. Is Putin still leading Russia in 2023? Oh. Okay. <laughs> cards aren't shuffling the way I want them to. All right, let's give them a good shuffle. Is Putin still leading Russia as we move into 2023 see this if if ukraine has that strength there obviously there's huge losses for russia and you know they're just expending so much material resources nobody really knows what was in their arsenal 
Uh, they are using older Soviet um, equipment now. Uh, let's see. I mean, there comes a line, I feel, in the sand where Putin, Putin is just throwing everything out at this. And he's no match for the combined materials, defence materials, of, of Ukraine's allies. It's just... All right, let's see. Is Putin still leading Russia by the time we get to mid-2023? Is Putin still leading Russia by the time we get to mid-2023? Putin still leading Russia by the time we get... So I'm seeing an hour, hourglass. I mean, given the image of an hourglass, his time is running out. We know that. The worse this goes, the more likely it is that Putin inevitably meets an end of some sort. And you can go to my readings in the past to see what that is. Is Putin still leading Russia by mid-2023? So I see also the hourglass... But I feel there is, uh, I'm seeing a movement of something in Russia. So I'm seeing uh, literally uh, horses galloping, which is really, really quick movement here. Freedom in some way. So the Hierophant is the government card. Okay, that's pretty, <laughs> something coming to fruition in time. It's also the card of spirit. Something coming to fruition in time. Is this the change of government that I mentioned? The Nine of Wands. This is defeat, battle, weary as the foundation of the reading. The better Ukraine does, the less likely it is that Putin can hold on to his leadership. And he knows. Here are our horses in the past. Quick, quick movement. Something uh, that could get out of control. Two horses, black and white, uh, moving in opposite directions trying to hold on to those reins. I mean, I think that's Putin's card. It's in the past. Overhead, we've got the Hermit card, the isolation that Russia is currently under. In the immediate future, we have the devil, toxicity. I mean, you know, in many ways, even though this is just an energy, Putin is that devil energy. That's in the immediate future. You know, we haven't seen... Um, the atrocities that are currently being committed. We might see more in the immediate future. The here and now, we have the Eight of Wands, and this is really, really quick movement. I just see quick movement here. And we've got the Seven of Swords. So, again, <clears throat> you know, should Ukraine negotiate with Putin? Well, if he wins this, basically, uh, he'll be coming for you next. Okay, so we have here the hopes and fears pausing. It's interesting the ham hangman is coming up a lot. Is he still leading the country? Page of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles. This is somebody young, younger. Uh, it's also about, I asked by mid-year. Uh, he's certainly been cut down in some way. And we've got the world here, endings, endings and beginnings. It's, something's over by the mid-year and there's change. Um, so if he's hanging on for a few months more, it's not for long. Uh, 2023 is the year, I think, that he falls from power. King of Swords, King of Coins. So literally, Putin versus Zelensky. Zelensky's like, in a way, Putin's Grim Reaper. And we've got the Queen of Wands here. The rise of female power and the sanctions biting. Again, circles of support and we've got the Four of Swords. So this is a combination to take him out of power. Now, whether he's fully out of power or someone else younger and new is in power, I often get the, the ask the question, will they be worse than Putin? And here's what I say to you. No, nobody in the immediate decades or decade, or decades, is worse than Putin, okay? This is Hitler-like energy that we're seeing now. So I now want to uh, look at the next person, the young people. Uh, there is some kind of, like a revolution by about mid-year, uh, young people demanding that he go. Uh, that Four of Swords tells us that ultimately he will. Is he gone by mid-year? Maybe he's hanging on by a thread, but I don't see him beyond 2023 leading Russia. 
Now I do want to just quickly pull on Navalny. Uh, he is the opposition leader. There have been news reports he's been shifted to a like a really really horrible abusive prison. Um, he's been relocated. There is a um, prisoner kind of watch organization in Russia that has verified this, that he has been moved to this notoriously abusive prison. Let's Naval Navalny. Of course, he bravely went back to Russia. Could he have done more in exile? Mm, I don't know. Uh, Navalny. If Putin kills him, he becomes a martyr. But I don't think Putin cares these days. So, uh, Navalny, what, where are you? What's happened to you? I've seen the aid of wands here. And a face. Okay, so there's a there's a, a person here and there's a light coming from underneath him. Where are you, Navalny? Where are you? He says I'm here. Where are you, Navalny? It's, you know, as he passed over, um, not quite yet, but he could have been severely injured in some way. Um, Navalny, are you still alive? Are you still alive? Alexei Navalny, are you still alive? Or just another Putin casualty. So are you still alive? The strength card. He may be just hanging on here. Yeah, temperance. So, I mean, these are two yes cards. Moderation, healing, healing of strength. Um, we have here the ten of coins as the foundation. Ten of coins. That's the oligarchs. That's, that's help from somebody. He could be receiving help from somebody. Queen of Coins uh, in the past here, stability, domestic stability, but that's in the past. So wherever he is, it's not, it's not good. Knight of Cups in the sky, an offer of something. Would Putin be stupid enough to murder him? Queen of Wands. So this is a woman. I feel this is his wife. We could be getting information from his wife about him in the near future. Now, the here and now is the Empress card. And that is my card for Russia. Let's see what's around him. The Eight of Cups, yeah. He's in an environment that's, you know, walking away from the light. You know, I feel he has been severely beaten or, or abused. Um, and he's being asked to, I don't know, kind of give up. I mean, this could also be him passing away. Uh, after this torture, and the Eight of Cups talks about resignation, moving away, moving toward a sunrise, uh, letting things go. It's a real letting go card. Ten of Cups in the hopes and fears. I think he's hanging on uh, primarily for his family. We have the Ace of Wands in the outcome. This is a new start, uh, passion. Let's see, passion, motivation. He is highly, highly motivated. The Justice card. An evening up of the scales. Does he survive? We have the Four of Wands reunification with his family. So I feel he's kind of unwell is a bad way to put it, but I feel he's 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 hovering here. But I'm kind of leaning. We will hear about him from his wife in the immediate future. She will give us an update. He is being pressured to renounce, make statements. Is this Ace of Wands and the Justice card? He does get justice in the end. Is he still alive? Is this? I mean, these are all yes cards, uh, the Ace of Wands, but this is all, can also be new starts. Is this Ace of Wands meaning he lives? So, six of Wands. So this is moving out of troubled waters. We've got the Hanged Man pausing uh, something putting something on hold, his movement, and the king of wands. I, You know, I, I feel these are good cards for him. And the six of cups, giving and receiving help. I think he's being helped by someone very instrumental. Two of wands, something coming to fruition in time. 
this help and the sun. These are good cards. Uh, I feel that he does hang on. I feel that he is being pressured, tortured, whatever you want to say, to renounce something, to make these public statements. I, I yeah, look, you know, I could be right, I could be wrong, but we'll be getting news about Navalny in the immediate future. I feel he is hanging on. Okay, um... Hmm. All right. Let's leave it there. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, uh, and bye for now.